Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, 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 attending this session. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Mark Wu with Allstate. He's going to be touching base on uh, what's happening a little bit more and more these days, which is tenant insurance. I'm going to start off with a uh, quick YouTube video, and then I'll hand it off to Mark with his presentation. Mark, did you want to say anything? No, I'm just delighted to have you guys. Michelle reached out to me, said several agents have had issues in regards to this, and if I would do a renter's insurance in how realtors should be involved with the process, should you or should you not recommend it if you are property managing for a, a investor? So that's what we'll be going through and you will be educated in this process. Great, so let's get started with this YouTube video. Here's what you should know about renter's insurance. If you're renting a home, condo, or apartment, this type of coverage can help protect you and your belongings. Renter's insurance typically includes three types of coverage, personal property, liability, and additional living expenses. Personal property coverage can help pay for a place of belongings if they're stolen or damaged by a public Liability coverage can help protect you if a gas is entered at residence or if you accidentally damage someone else's property. If you can't stay at home because of a poverty event, like fire, additional living expenses coverage can help. Stop sharing. Okay, that was the video. Um, so now I'm going to hand it off to Mark, Mark, so he can do his presentation. Hang on, Personal one second. Personal property coverage of your home. Full control to slip. Okay, can you okay, see that screen? Because I'm not sure what you're seeing. Yes, you got it. Yeah. All right. So, anyways. So the whole thing right now is I'm going to, again, go through just real quickly what renter's insurance was. I know that video was a little jumbled up, but some people, um, you know, watching is, is one way they learn and others are, are hearing. So anyways, renter's insurance basic. What a renter's insurance covers is personal property coverage, meaning the contents of the tenant that's living in the house additional living expenses where they're not able to live in the house and the uh, and the policies pay for the tenants to be placed someplace else while the house is being rebuilt due to a covered loss and then there's the tenants liability and medical all right so what what kind of uh, perils are involved in a renter's insurance there are things like theft fire wind hail smoke explosion falling objects And then when it goes to liability, we're talking about medical protection, meaning for the guests that your tenants have over the premises. Additional living expenses is when there's a covered peril and the company will pay for your tenants to be someplace else while the, the house or the, you know, is being rebuilt. And then finally, liability. If your tenants or their tenant uh, living resident relatives in the family causes an injury to somebody in, in the property, you know, it would afford liability to that up to 100,000 or whatever the tenant has uh, to protect them in case they are involved in a lawsuit. So some examples of, of what, um, you know, family liability could be normally limits are million dollars, I'm sorry, 100,000, and they can get up to a, a million, but most um, $100,000 is the minimum amount that comes with normally with with uh, a renter's policy. Medical coverage is something different. It's, it's where you have an invited guest over. They don't happen to have, have to sue you. you uh, there's no negligence involved with the tenant, but maybe they just want to take care of the, 
the medical coverages of somebody that's injured on the premises. It could be 1,000, 5,000, 25,000, depending on what company you're involved with, you could buy that. And again, I talked to you guys about loss of use coverage, which is like additional living expenses in a condo HO6 policy or a homeowner, other than the fact that now the tent is being put up someplace else in the event of a, a covered loss. Now note in this case that the tenant is still being um, paying rent to the landlord. So he's not absolved from that. The reason why you want that is as, as, a, as somebody that's property managing for a, a landlord is because you don't wanna lose a, a great tenant. If, if Peter is my tenant and he's been my tenant for years and years, the last thing I wanna do is because it's gonna take three months to construct uh, the damage of the home he's renting from me um, to, to rebuild and, and, and you know, fix the damages. It's for him to go someplace else and never have him again. And so the way I keep him is that we put him up, the, the renter's insurance puts him up someplace else, similar like quality of the house he's accustomed to. And that way uh, I get him back when the house is re uh, you know, remodeled or redone uh, as a result of a covered loss. So there's a deductible amount, like, like when you guys get involved in an auto accident, you know, tenants have a deductible before the policy pays out, it's two fifty five dollars or thousand dollars The higher deductible, the lower the premium. So that's just on the renters. And I know I flew right through it, but what I need to be training you folks is, is how does it help a landlord? Many of you guys are involved in property management. All right. Uh, maybe not at per, uh, company per se, but you are helping your your clients manage a home, a, a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex. And so how does renter's insurance benefits the landlords? Well, property damage by a tenant can in some cases be covered by a renter's policy. And I'm going to go through some scenarios with that uh, so that you guys could see it. And then we talked about loss of use, you know, where I talked about where we put up Peter someplace else so that I don't lose him as a, as a long-term tenant because he can't stay in my house anymore. It pays for money to be put someplace else. But liability protection is super, super, super important because what tends to happen is if a tenant, I mean, sorry, if there's an injury that's caused on the property by the tenant, oftentimes an attorney will sue not only the tenant, but the landlord and and if the tenant has liability insurance, then then you know sometimes that protects the landlord because the, the suit goes no further. They can collect all the money from the tenant. So uh, super, super important, like I said. So here's a comp uh, potential claim scenarios I like to go through. So tenant has a sentence candle and accidentally kicks it in, the, in their sleep, causing 8,000 8, fire damage to the walls and floors. Again, if the tenant doesn't have insurance, a landlord's policy would cover that. However, if the tenant has renter's insurance, believe it or not, we go after the tenant's po renter's policy and that's the liability portion of the tenant's policy. Here's a second scenario. We live in a very a community where many people take off their shoes, you know? And so what if somebody trips and falls and breaks their legs and now they have sustained $6,500 of medical bill? Believe it or not, again, Family liability out of the renter's policy can pick up that tab. Or a tenant is giving her child a bath. Mom is late to school, pulls out the, the kid. They run, they forget, they leave the bathtub running. And now they've caused $15,000 of damage to the floors, the drywalls, the flooring and whatnot. Again, we can go after the tenant's liability policy in, in this event. You're something that also happens, you know, tenant is cooking, they answer the door, fire happens, damage to the kitchen, smoke damage throughout, you know, $55,000 of damage. If, if the tenant doesn't have liability insurance, unfortunately, you got to claim it on your, your landlord's policy. But if they do, we can go after their liability policy and have the, their renter's insurance pay for that. What about liability scenario? I actually had this quite a while ago, about 20 years ago, where my, my, uh, my client was renting a house. The lease said, no dogs allowed. And basically, 
the tenant got a dog, the dog bit somebody and my, my uh, landlord was sued, you know? And unfortunately they went and presented, hey, the lease says the, 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 landlord's, the landlord's not permitting pets on the property or there's no pets. And what the other party's attorney said was, well, Mr. Landlord, when you came by to collect the check, did you ever see that there was a dog there? And by him admitting that he saw it, they won the case. So, but anyways, this is how, if you, you know, I like it just because of liability because everybody is so happy in California, but specifically if they have a pet, a dog, a small dog, a big dog, ensure that they, they get insurance for that. Uh, whoops. I put the other uh, forms, I, I won't go through it, but but you, you saw the other parts of where claim scenarios happen. Must have went backwards, so I apologize. Um, see this one happening in condos as well as in, in homes. You know, your tenant's washing their car, somebody slips and falls. You know, it's on your premises or on your, your landlord's uh, premises but it's the action of the tenant that caused the injury. If attorneys have a, uh, uh, and Peter could attest to that, you know, that, that they go after the deeper pockets. So if the tenant normally doesn't have money, then they're gonna go after the landlord because the injury happened there. If the tenant has renter's insurance, however, then the policy will, will most likely pick up that claim. Uh, even liability claims outside the, the premises is covered. You know, a uh, tenant is playing golf and hits the ball and goes through a car windshield. You know, we'll pick up that tab. Uh, their kids are playing baseball, happens to whack somebody, and there's medical insurance. Again, family liability will pick up that tab. It can't be an intentional act, however. Okay. A medical scenario. How is medical different? So it's not regarding, it's not paid to uh, resident relatives. But again, I have Ruben over and I'm the tenant and Ruben has, happens to be swallowing on a, a piece of ice, choking on a piece of ice. Or let's just say that he was just dancing around and um, you know having a good time and he slips and falls and, and an ambulance comes out. Um, but you know it was none, nothing that I did that caused Ruben to get hurt. But I can, I can ask for my medical uh, policy out of the renter's policy to, to pick up that ambulance tab up to 1,000, 5,000, or 25,000, depending on the coverage amounts um, you know, of my policy. Um, talked about the choking and the ambulance coming out. And these are a couple of other scenarios that you could read into that I, I don't need to. Um, you know, talk about the claims. So now that you know what renter's insurance covers, now what? All right, I've taken you through that. You are representing your, now I'm gonna be speaking to you as a realtor and I'm gonna be giving you guys suggestions um, as a property manager, you know, what and what you should not be doing. So if you're a property man, if you are a property manager and you're requiring it, you better be tracking whether they have it or not. Um, so what process do you have in place to track it if the lease requires that, that the tenants have uh, renter's insurance? And you have to do more than just get, getting the copy of the policy at the time of the lease, uh, which I would say 80 to 90% of property managers do. Because what tends to happen is these tenants are smart. If they need to save money and uh, basically save a dime, they just buy the renter's policy for a month they hand you over the policy and you don't remember what you're doing or because you have so much on your plate and all that. And then they come back and terminate the policy. So then there's no more coverage after the, the initial period. As a property manager, like I said, if you require it, you better enforce it. But how are you willing to force it? Are you willing to evict a tenant for violating their lease because they did not maintain renter's insurance? On the whole, most, I would say most of us don't want to evict a tenant just because they don't uh, have it. And then how, are, how are, are we going to enforce it? Are you guys going to be as the property uh, manager calling uh, to hound, to threaten, to, to softly or gently remind the, the renter that they need to do it? You know, what if they decide not to 
I mean, just to ignore you and say, yeah, I'm going to do it, but they don't do it as many renters uh, will promise us things and, and consistently do not do what they, they tell us they're going to do. Uh, or you can put the renter's policy on auto pay and not so much you, but you can, you can ask them to. This is very common in the industry where it's automatically paid. Now, you as a, a property manager can pay for the policy. There's no rules that insurance companies have for that. However, you cannot get obtain the policy for the tenant. The tenant has to get the policy and authorize you to be able to make the payments and all that. And a lot of times, uh, some property managers just add it to the rent and then and then back back bill the, the tenant. So that's the way to do it. And that way you can ensure that there's constantly a, a policy on the property. And then, so if a potential investor asks if you require renter's insurance, what should be your response? First of all, I want to tell you that I am not a legal uh, attorney in California. I'm not uh, professionally or, or can advise you according to that. But here's one thing that many of my, uh, my uh, the, what we always suggest, you know, you could say, we strongly re recommend it, Mr. Investor, but unfortunately, I cannot require it because it's not enforceable. And the reason why you want to make that statement um, is, is that I, uh, basically an investor can go after you. So let's just say, Ruben, if I may have the permission to use you as an example, I am representing Ruben and I am the property manager and Ruben is the, is the um, investor of the land and whatnot. If I make that statement that I required renters insurance and all that and, and um, to him in the contract and all that, and let's just say now Peter happens to have a claim and he happens to sue and there's no, I mean, sorry, Peter gets a claim from somebody and they happen to sue him and he has no renters insurance. Theoretically, um, Ruben could come back at me as the realtor and say, well, you know what, I hired you and you were supposed to make sure that my tenant had renter's insurance and they did not. It could come that Ruben is going to be liable for that claim out of his pocket or Ian or, or something. So it's super, super important. If anything you can take out of this class is this very one statement. And so you, so my suggestion when I'm teaching realtors in this industry is strongly recommend it try to enforce it, but just don't make a contract and agreement that you have with the, the landlord uh, or the investor that's hiring you to say, I'm going to ensure that they have it because really it's hard to enforce. So now it's question time period and I hope this was helpful. Would this, would this cover any damage, hey. property damage caused by pets? Okay. Hang on, we do have a question here. Why don't you come over here? And who's talking? So I know I like it's Xavier. Him. He's in in our class, so I'm going to have Got him it. stop by so he can. Uh... Hello, um, I just just have a simple question. Um, sure, exactly. Would, would this insurance um, provide coverage in in the scenario where a pet causes property damage? Well, that's 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 liability and all that. Um, you know what? Um, that's not a covered peril for, for a pet that causes property damage. So unfortunately not. But you, I, I thought you also asked in the event of theft, like if they break something, was that also part of your question? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I heard that. I, I do have some questions, but let's let's uh, see if any of our agents have questions first. Does anybody I, have I have a question. Okay. Um, th this is Irma Sid. Hi, Irma. Um, hi. The question I have, what is the typical cost for insurance is it based on the amount of the that you pay on the lease how how is sure. what's the normal great question it is really based on on uh, the amount of contents the the uh tenant has it's also based on the size some some companies base it on room counts so like like a one bedroom renter's insurance would would be 20 to you know 20 30 bucks a month very inexpensive where uh, a San Marino house that's 6,000 square feet could be thousand, I mean, several hundred dollars a, a month because that, that tenant has a lot of content. So, 
but on the whole, uh, renter's insurance is very for affordable, you know, between 20 and 50 bucks a month. Uh, just, just to add that to uh, Mark, is that done, uh, is that calculated based off of uh, inspection from the insurance company or what? Not at all. Or what you claim on it? No, it, the, the renter's insurance is just based, the, the tenant will have uh, a conversation with the agent, say, hey, I have this, this, this. And then the agent can play around with the deductible and the different various coverages, you know, and whatnot. And and there's there's a lot of variables involved with the cost, but has nothing to do with it. the inspection is not even a part of of um, renters insurance. So it's based off of your the communication and what you want to include exactly. in that insurance. <laughs> right. Okay. If they just want minimum coverage, then we give them minimum, although we don't we try not to do that out of my office, but they could get it out there. They're stripped down policies. Does Anybody else? Oh, so Carol said, does the insurance company determine who is responsible, the landlord or the tenant? Uh, yes and no. It depends where you want the claim to be. Again, off the record, I know this is being recorded, but you guys are, are re the representative, right, as a property management. So I don't want the claim to go to my landlord if I can avoid it. Do you guys understand that? Again, yes. scenario, and that's why I want to insulate my landlords and put and, and really encourage my tenants to buy renter's insurance, because if a claim happens that's a result of my tenant's negligence and all that, I don't have to go into my landlord's policy. I don't have to put in a double claim. I'm going to file on my tenant's renter's insurance. Again, the scenario is like they caused the fire because they left something burning on the stove or they cause a slip and fall because on the property because you know they left water running while they were washing their car or their dog bit somebody. I'm not gonna try to put a claim into the landlord's policy because even if it's not paid out, sometimes companies, that's kind of like a strike against them or like having an accident on your auto and you don't want too many claims on a, po a policy, whether it's your homeowners or landlords. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I have a I have a question. I know that the uh, the renters insurance does not cover intentional uh, uh, action by the right. you know that is true of the, uh, misunderstanding of the negligence of the of the uh, of the tenant. But if it's unintentional and it caused uh, damage to the other tenants, would that cover that? Uh, I don't understand. What, what do you mean? Tenant, in other words, in other words uh, if if uh, if the uh, Say if uh, uh, the one of the, the you know the tenants uh, uh, left the uh, faucet uh, you know running right and then it uh, it, it caused damage to the adjacent uh, uh, apartment uh, yes would that cover yes yes it would because it's liability it's their actions that cause so now you have adjacent units and all that uh, let me give you another scenario that same one where where they left the the, the smoke I mean sorry. The, the pot burning on the stove and now there's smoke damage, not only to the tenant's unit, but the adjacent units, all right? That is liability that, that, can, can, that can go forth and, and provide protection for that. Yeah, and that, it doesn't co cover habitability uh, issues, right? Like it, it, not, for the, not for the tenant that was uh, affected. Right, right, but what, what so if- That's why you want every tenant to have their own renter's policy because it yeah. would. But if if one of the tenants uh, who has the renters in, uh, insurance, uh, it was so so bad, you know the hy hygienic uh, condition so bad that it caused all the pests and all the uh, the roaches and going to the uh, other. That's apartment. different. That's not a that's not a covered peril. Like if okay. I'm dirty and and roaches get to the next that that's not <laughs> something that will be covered. <laughs> Remember, sudden and accidental, Peter. <laughs> but you know, okay, you know who would cover it? That, that, I, I, nobody. I, that's I, the roach I, man. <laughs> that would nobody. Be, uh, I mean, what, even the homeless insurance would not cover no, that. No, no, pest does not cover because again, remember, insurance is sudden and an accidental event that happens quickly. Roaches and all that is because somebody's trashy and you know, but things in. It's not. And that's hard to prove too. Pest report. Pest you control. Know, well, last last time I was in in Morfitt, the lawsuit. And the, uh, the, uh, the some of the tenants uh, filed the lawsuit against uh, the uh, owner? Uh, the owner 
for habitability uh, problems right. and 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 uh, yeah they have they find that that the um the uh homeless and homeowners insurance cover part That's of it good. but not the whole thing but talk part of it and then they yeah. drag everybody into the table and settle the whole thing yeah, they may have just because of the cost and all that to litigate and all, you know, whatever the company did. But on the whole, I have not ever heard that in mind. So really? that's a good company to have insurance with then. If so they so what in, what insurance policy would cover that? I, to there, the there's landlord. none that I'm aware of, Peter, that oh. covers that kind of thing. That's tough for the landlord, you know. It is. That's why, you know, you got to make sure. You, because you because the landlord... That, because the landlord really did, uh, didn't cause it, right? You, and you're right, and I'm agreeing. Would... So you you have to be able to go after the tenant as a landlord for that, right? That's that's a court. That's a civil. Uh, <laughs> Good luck case. if you have to go to. The, yeah, to they don't have money. Chase that's, after that's the, the tenant, you know. Uh, on that same note, I I want to I just want to clarify, Mark, if if I have renter's insurance and as a I'm the sorry, tenant, pick, right? Tenant insurance, yes. Okay. I'm tenant. You're, you're tenant. Okay, you're the rent. Yeah. I got to figure and, out which part. And I, I, I leave the pan and it smokes That's and it goes, into a, it goes into the adjacent unit or units. Does my insurance cover those units? Up to the liability of the policy, yes. Got it. Okay. So, so that are the so, units. So, so that can be covered by two. That, that can be covered not only by your renters and landlord, insurance, but landlord. But I don't want, if, if it's within the limits, I don't want to put a claim into my landlord policy. That's why you're wanting to have renter's insurance as a rule, suggest that because the, you know all my career, I've been trying to uh, teach that, but most most property managers, I don't want to deal with it. It's too much hassle and all that. Right. How does it help my client? My, my training always with your office has been, how do I bring value to help you guys look out for, for the interests of your landlords or your, your clients? Right. So, so that would fall in the limits of the liability. It, it is. Yes. All right. Got it. Um, and then I had another question. Uh, um, you, you indicated uh, at the, uh, in the event that they, they have to move out, they still have to pay rent because they don't want to move. They don't want to. That is correct. They're, they're not absolved for that. They can't double dip, meaning not pay you rent, but then they'd be put up someplace else. Right. So what companies tend to do is like, Let's just say that that you're running a house from me from San Marino and it's a 4,000 square feet home, right? And you're paying me 8,000 a month, okay? I can't, the companies will not say, well, you know what, Ruben, uh, we'll put you up and let's move you to Motel 6 at, at Pomona. I, I mean, I hope, I hope nobody lives there. It is. But I, I'm giving the, the difference, right? Right, right. Yeah, I understand. Right? They, they have to try to find you a house. And what they normally do is they'll go, okay, is there a 4,000 square feet house in San Marino? If not, is there a 4,000 square feet in the surrounding cities of San Marino? And then when they don't get to that point, then they put you in a posh hotel. I see. So, so, so my quality, and rent, but you still got to pay me the rent. You can't double dip and not pay me but also expect to be put up. Got it. So, okay, that answered my questions. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Well, Mark, this is Clint. I have a question for you. Yes, Since Clint. it's so difficult to enforce the rentals insurance, would a landlord, for example, to add that policy onto the lease and have the tenant, you know, issue, issue a policy to the tenant and then the landlord pays for the insurance? That's what I had suggested. That's the best that's, way to that do happens it, a lot in the industry, especially in the market where it is tough. You know, it depends on your market because if we are in a market where it is hard to find homes to rent, we could basically do anything. enforce anything, right? Okay. If, if we're in a market where there's tons of vacancy I and know, rents I are know. low, then, then we can, we're helpless to do anything. Because like you say, uh, one of the things that the tenant tend to do is they'll, they'll promise you getting a policy within a month or two and then cancel it. It's hard for you to enforce it because it's going to be too late for you to enforce it. By the time right. you find out, the insurance is not you, covering you. You're, you're absolutely right. So the way we do it and legal or not, check with your attorney or resident attorney or, or okay. with Peter, is to say, you know what? You, you Clint, want to rent my home and so as a condition of my home, here's my rent. My rent is $2,000 a month. But yeah, I'm going to add on but, the policy. You know, but whatever. I'm going to add on, you know, renter's insurance is required and, and costs, costs between 20 and $40. 
you go out, Mr. Client, Clint, and find where you want to get renter's insurance, but we're going to bill you monthly as an add-on and backdate it because I am going to auto-pay your that, that renter's policy. Can you just put it into the rent itself? For yes, example, you can do that, but you know, it, it, whatever way you want to do. Okay, but, gotcha. You know, actually, that's what was done in the, in the uh, student's dormitory, you know? Uh, not the dormitory, but the apartments that rent to the students. Is and that what they, they do? They, they oh, I, I don't know about that. So. Yeah, they automatically require the students to have the, the tenants uh, uh, the sure. insurance, and they have they add in uh, about $50 per month of, of, uh, on the rent. And then you so can do the all, adjustment okay, annually okay. later and say, hey, I give you a rebate back because your policy only costs $40 a month. You're, you're $120 back, Mr. Tenant. Okay. Yeah. Well, gotcha. Thanks so much. And if we have some issue, we'll go to Peter. Peter's the expert. No, 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 not he me. Is, uh, is. Uh, Mark, 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 Mark. Mark. Mark is the expert in the insurance. Oh. No, it has a legal issue. Don't come to me. <laughs> Mark, I have a, yes. another question. It's Irma again. Hi, Irma. Okay, let's say you have a $5,000 TV and you have like a $30,000 diamond ring and you're renting a place. So you have a lot of valuable stuff. My question How? would be, why are you renting with that thirty? No, just kidding. Uh, no, 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 no. But I, I know what to add. I know what not, to answer. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. But I know people that do have Absolutely. a lot of value. Absolutely. A lot of value. So, I mean, it seems like very uh, reasonable insurance, but. How does that insurance look at, okay, this person has- Let me tell you has... how it works, whether you are a renter, a homeowner, or uh, a, uh, you own a condo, all right? Most policies will pay a certain limit and, and most of the limits will cover almost everything that you a normal person would own. However, most policies also have a limitation when it comes to jewelry. And so they have to have a, a rider and endorsement. So that $5,000 TV, if they have a replacement cost, they're going to get a $5,000 TV or, or, a, or even it costs $7,000 now. As long, so if you lost, if your tenant lost an 80 inch big screen TV with all the pixels that were the best in the world and whatnot, and now that TV costs more now today than it did last year, the companies would buy that newer TV. However, on the, on the jewelry, they're probably going to only be limited to $1,000, all right, in the event of a theft uh, and up to the policy limits if it's an event of a fire. But most diamond rings and all that don't get destroyed due to a fire or, or, or perils. Did that answer your question for you, Omar? Oh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Real quick, Mark, any exclusions typically? <laughs> Tons of exclusions, but you got to read policies from companies to company. But on the whole, you know, intentional acts are not going to be something that's covered. You know, uh, you're going to exclude it from earthquake. You're going to uh, because that's a separate policy. You're going to be excluded from surface flood, meaning it hits the ground and comes back in and destroys. Uh, a bursted pipe is a covered peril. A lot of people don't realize that. So that's part of the policy, whether it's a home condo or a renters. Perfect. Got for a couple more minutes. So last questions, urgent questions or what coverage? I have one more question. He's coming. That's all right. Just talk I get him. I get paid by the minute. <laughs> what, what what other coverage is there to protect against pet damage? There's I, I'm not aware of any. That, that's why I always recommend uh, taking a large pet deposit and non-refundable. Got it. Again, just out of experience. Hey, I know we don't, we're out of time. Mark, are there still certain pets that are, are excluded? Yes, there pet are. Pet um, and it's come to the company, so you just got to shop around. A lot of companies don't like your Rottweilers, your Pit Bulls, your Akitas, uh, your Dobermans. Um, and frankly, I, I probably, you know, I get terrified as a, even a landlord myself that, that I have those type of dogs that, from my tenants, because what does what your normal tenant tell you? Oh, it's friendly. It's never bit anybody. Guess what? When it get bite somebody in your, under your watch, you, you'll be sad by the day that, that you, you said, oh, okay, I, I allowed that. So. Yeah. What about it? Right, Peter? Yep. Yeah, that's true. Oh, what take it, it once. 
<laughs> what about if it's a mixed uh, pit bull and German Shepherd? Same. Same thing. <laughs> Those that breed in the dog. So, yeah. Well, you yep. You're recording or I'll give you an answer. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any final questions? Mark has a, a, a tight schedule today. So going once, twice. All right, Mark. Uh, so for Very any good, of your Mark. insurance needs, Peter, do you have a question? No, no, I don't have a question. I just want to thank Mark for coming to talk to us and very informational, very, uh, very insightful. So that's good. Yeah, for any, there you go right there. Uh, so for any of your insurance needs, uh, contact Mark, his uh, email and cell phones uh, on the uh, screen. Uh, and thank you, Mark, I really appreciate it. Ruben, if I could say, I don't give out my cell phone to clients and so, but I do give it to realtors because uh, I get called at the latest hours for the simplest things. And I wanna be available for you know you guys because that's how I built my business. Um, I thank Peter, uh, you know, for all allowing me to be part of your 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 group. Um, people value me just because I just tell the truth, and you know, most of the times we don't even get the business because that's not, you know, everybody has their own policy. But if you need somebody just to be informational sake, I'm always there to help you, even if we're not part of the transaction. Appreciate it. Thank Mark. you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Take thank care. You. Thank you. All right. So. Um, that was our, that concludes our session for the insurance portion. Um, Mark, uh, I mean, uh, Peter, did, is there anything you wanted to add before we go? No, to but that's, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, so in, uh, in about five minutes, uh, we're gonna have uh, Remind Media do a quick 10, 15 minute uh, presentation uh, on some marketing strategies for, for agents. Uh, so hang tight for that. And uh, let's see what happened here with share screen. In the meantime, is there any questions anybody has for me, for Peter, uh, anything else? Open forum. All right. Just hang tight for about five minutes. I'm gonna to try to get him in early. He's right here. Ruben, I, I have to leave for the car meeting at about 11 o'clock. So I just want to tell you ahead of time. Okay, no worries, Peter. And I have to leave early maybe. Yeah, Mark, Mark left a little early. He was supposed to be on till about uh, 45. Um, You're muted, uh, Ruben. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to uh, uh, to log on so I could give him a uh, hang tight, everybody. We're just ahead of schedule a little bit. How is everybody doing? Good, thank you. Good. Getting ready for Vegas. Oh, that's right. Oh well. Wow. Don't don't spend too much money on, at the table. <laughs> no, if I do, I'll go to Old Town and play seven stud poker. <laughs> Just call them. So have you, are you, is, is anybody familiar with Remind Media? That's like the, uh, I, I get those uh, brochures periodically from the realtors in my area. 
uh, one of my neighbors, and it's a very good marketing tool. I don't, I'm not sure of the cost or anything, but is anybody familiar with it? No. No. I'm not okay. Sure, I'm not sure. I do have some copies in my the red, red, red lettering. Uh, it's called uh, Remind Media. It's uh, it, they're like magazines that get sent to the homes. I have samples in my. I also, have, you know what? I'll send out a uh, e blast with a PDF presentation as well. But he should be logging in in the next uh, two minutes or so. Hey, Joe, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. All right, you're good to go. Oh, I'm good to go, perfect. Yeah, you awesome. have all the agents here and... Uh... Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for having me, guys. My name is Joe Frazier, Jr. I'm one of the executives for Reminder Media. Um, I think a few of you may be familiar with us, but if you're not, we are a 19-year-old company. And I just wanna make sure you guys can see my screen, right? Did I share it properly? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we're a 19-year-old company. Uh, we work with over 60,000 of you across the country, but our mission has always been the same. It's really to help you guys stay connected with your top relationships, to help you close more deals and retain more business. Okay, that's the name of the game. Uh, we're a big believer that relationships and real estate go hand in hand, but in case you don't believe us, we base it off of what NAR says, and this is exactly the stat. It shows 60% of buyers and 68% of sellers found their agent through referrals or used the last agent that they had worked with before. And that right there, you can't, I mean, it just makes sense. Out of the sellers though, what was interesting is out of the 68% of sellers, only 6% found their agent through farming and websites combined. And I thought that was interesting. So it's really just to show you that at the end of the day, you can do Zillow and all of these different websites. We have some great digital products ourselves, but we firmly understand that when people are ready to make the move, they go with someone they either know, love, and or trust. And I'm sure you guys can agree with that. Now, for you guys as business professionals, you know this is not a free business. I don't have to tell you that. But what's really alarming is that we're talking about how great and how important real estate and relationships go hand in hand. But NAR says, if that's the case, then why does 60% of agents not spend any money in that area? Okay, And that's really where the real problem lies. And that's where we come into play. We understand this is gonna happen. I'm sure some of you on this call here, it's happened to, unfortunately, you get to that neighborhood of a past client and you see the for sale sign on the lawn and it's not with you. And I know that stinks, but it is a part of the industry, but we've been able to minimize that from happening as much by simply helping you guys stay top of mind and just in that presence opportunity. Okay, so enough of that. So how do we actually do that? Well, we have four publications. We started out with one, American Lifestyle, and this has done us very well, uh, but we wanted to evolve. So now we have Start Healthy, Good to Be Home, which is our realtor's favorite, and Business in Action. And each one of these are 48 pages. They're very high quality. If you've never seen it, think of like an architectural digest type of quality. Okay, the difference is the content inside. So American Lifestyle speaks to living life in America, recipes, traveling, art, home designs. Start Healthy is all health and wellness based. Good to be home, all about the home, and business in action talks about different business ventures and marketing strategies. 
So you really can't go wrong with any of the four. Honestly, it's just a personal preference. Okay, but you have nice options. So what I want to show you guys is exactly how it works. But just know that each one of our magazines, we change the content every two months. So there's always something fresh for you guys. It doesn't mean you have to do it that often. In fact, some of our agents do it quarterly. Some may do it just once or twice a year. You have that flexibility. Okay, as I said, they're 48 pages a piece. But what agents really love is the fact that you're going to see here in a second, we do pretty much everything for you, but still give you some customization control. So it looks like you've produced it yourself. All right, so this is exactly how it works. Uh, you're going to be featured right here. First thing that your client or prospect sees is you, your picture and all of your branding information. And what we've done is we've given you a lot of different cover options to choose from. So each one of our publications, we have anywhere from 10 to 20 different cover options that you'll be able to pick from. And then in the crease of the magazine, or I should say the inside of the front cover, your branding sits here as well. But this is what I really love because Bill and Judy's magazine could have their name and a message directly to them. But then Susan's could say, congratulations on the baby boy. So they can have different messages, which means each one of your recipients can get their own letter and if you don't know the power in that, when people see dear value customer or recipient, it's very generic, it's very vague, but when they see their name in a message, it goes a long way because they think you've taken that special time to talk directly to them. All right, and then in the crease of the magazine, there's this tear out card. So there's actually one in the front inside and then there's another in the back inside. Think of these are like glorified business cards, okay? Or uh, upscale postcards. But this is something your client or prospect can rip out. Your branding sits here as well, but the tear out cards are 100% customized. So you can have us put anything you want. Uh, we have tons of options. As you can see, some of the options we had there with recipes, but I'm just gonna pull up the drop down menu. So we have over 3000 selections of things you can choose from, but let's say you couldn't find anything that you like that we offered. You also have the ability to send us something. This could be a great place to put one you recently sold, highlight a client, uh, borrow this spot out or lend this spot out to a lender. Okay, but you can see tons of categories. So you'll never run out of options. And then in the back cover, it's the same thing. Same rule applies. You have complete freedom to do whatever you want on the inside and the outside of this back cover. This is traditionally where a lot of you will put your listings or recently sold. I have one agent, I love what she does. She gets a lot of referrals doing it. She takes the outside of the back cover and makes it all about her client. She mails out quarterly with us. So every quarter she sends us over a different client to highlight and she calls it her client appreciation page. But it works like a gem because when that person that's getting highlighted gets the magazine, they go ahead and they show everybody in their network. So now that's exposing that agent to that person's network. And it's a really good first impression to see somebody saying, hey, listen, this is what my realtor does for me. Okay, so I share that with you to show you there's a lot of different things you can do with the publication. Besides having to send it to your clients or top relationships, you guys have been taking it to your listing presentations to look professional, open houses. Um, I've seen you guys use it as a raffle at the open house. So that way people leave their right phone number and email to have the opportunity to win the, the magazine and places of businesses. Okay, so that magazine you can really use for every aspect of your business. In addition to the hard copy though, we have um, four digital products now. We have local events, which is exactly as it sounds. It's events local to you. Uh, we send two weeks worth of events to your email database. They open it up, they see your branding, they see the events, and they really think that you've taken the time to find all of it yourself. And that's what we're doing is painting you as the area expert. We have a digital version for each one of our physical magazines. We have branded posts, which is all of our content from our previous magazines. You guys can get that in a digital form and share it individually. So for you guys who struggle to find good content on social media, this is the solution. And landing pages. We're slowly uh, going out with landing pages here where you can do a form, somebody wants a quote, um, see what their house is worth, et cetera. Anything to kind of bring traffic back to you is what we're trying to do, okay? So that's how we started out is with just that one magazine you saw. Now we have a plethora of different marketing products. Uh, in fact, a lot of professionals are coming to us for everything. They said, listen, you guys do everything. You do it well, very well priced. I'll just park everything here and save me some time and money. And that's exactly what's happening. And if you go to Reminder Media's Facebook page, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. 
uh, testimonials after testimonials. The biggest consistent compliment we've gotten over 19 years is that the magazines have been the one marketing tool that you guys feel confident when people receive it, they will actually hold on to it. And it's not just something they're throwing in the trash. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's what you guys are looking for. Something that is to keep you top of mind, not gonna break the bank, but makes you look very professional. All right. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up here with the pricing. The pricing is super simple. We did a, a, a special today as well on top of what I'm gonna offer you guys. So I'll share that with you. But does anybody have any questions on the customization side of things? Any questions from anybody? Right now is the time to ask Joe. So if you have any questions, feel free. Um, do you have it in Spanish? Can you ah, great, great question. We do not yet. Um, however, you can do the letter, the personal letter in Spanish. Um, now, I will say the caveat is that if you have something already structured for the back covers of the tarot cards that's in Spanish and you send that over to us, we can put that on there and just put it on there as it's in Spanish, but we can't format it into Spanish as of right now. Are you guys working on it? Yes, we're working on that, getting the content in Spanish. Uh, there's a couple of things we have. I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek. Uh, putting it in Spanish is one. And then the other thing is coming out with a 100% customized magazine. Not really too applicable for the realtors because I know a lot of you shy away from that. You don't want more work to do. But we have a lot of other industries who are asking for more flexibility in that area. So those are two things that will be coming in the, the distant to near future because it does take time to do that stuff. Great question, though. I have a question for you, Joe. Uh, yes. The reason why I brought you guys on board to present is because I get the I get your uh, magazine from one of my neighbors. That's a, okay. a real estate agent. And I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the I'm the type of guy that throws away a lot of stuff. It's just just a bunch of garbage that comes in the mail. But I hold on to these and I read it, so I know it works. Right. My question is, if uh, let's say in my situation, let's say if I was to uh, uh, utilize your, your marketing with the magazine where my neighbor already does it. Uh, what's the protocol there? What, how, how does that, how do you guys, um, exclusivity, the exclusivity off. I, I know where you're going with that. So if you're getting one, can it send multiple people to the same, same address? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because obviously you want to capitalize on your, your immediate neighborhood letting them know that you know you're 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 into business and to use your services but you already have someone that beat you to the punch a year ago and has been sending me the same marketing materials that i want to send to the neighbors so uh is there an overlay is there like a, a certain protocol that you guys uh uh follow or or is yes. it just you know it you know may the mat, best man win or something <laughs> great question yeah so we so a couple of things with that. Yes, we do have an exclusivity um, exclusivity feature that we do. And that means, yeah, if you're sending it to someone already, no one else will be able to send it to that person. So it is really a first come first serve. Uh, with that being said, you know, obviously you guys know in real estate, agents fall off and come back and fall. So if you're not actively mailing with us, then that address becomes open again. OK, but if you're active with us, then we hold that address and make sure no one else is sending it to that address because yeah, it doesn't look great if one person's getting 30 different magazines from us. Um, so we have different styles. But yes, if they're getting the American lifestyle, that means they can't get any other magazine from us while that person is actively sending it to us. And that's to help you guys and also help us as well. That's good news and bad news, but yeah, that's good news. <laughs> no, it is. It, it, it is yes. because it safeguards yourself, but you know, also limits the people that you want. Some people that already receive it. Right. So, so my my next question is: so this is based off of the criteria that we give to you to send to certain addresses, right? Not a demographic area. Correct. Correct. So, and we go by individual addresses. So if somebody ever gave us a zip code, they can do the zip code, but then we would just come back to them and say, out of that zip code, there's 20 people already receiving it. So those addresses would not be going, to, it would not be going to those addresses. Got it. Okay. Okay. Great, great questions, guys. So yeah, and then, um, you know, we have a couple other products to speak upon that too, because one of the other things was, I love the magazine, people hold on to it, but how do I prioritize who to send it to? 
And this has been a great time saver for you guys. It's called targeted follow-up. We have a predictive analytics system. Uh, as you can see, we go for these three data points, consumer, property, and behavioral. And short and sweet, you could upload as big or small of a database right to our system. We can score it based off of these, this data we're pulling here. And we can come back and tell you who's most likely to be moving in the next two to six months. And that has been really, really helpful um, because let's say you chose not to put that person on the mailing list yet, right, to be mailed out to. You can still send them a text and say, hey, just thinking about you, letting you know, but you really know based off the system that, hey, they're most likely to be wanting to move. So that's really why you're connecting with them. So this has been really, really helpful for you guys and a big time saver on who to prioritize your mailing list. And this is free of charge. We have another one called targeted mailing list. This is a little different. This is for those who may not have a big list or just moved or new to the industry and trying to make their way and figure out who to get this to. Well, we can build you a list. So let's say you wanted to target homeowners who make a median income of $250,000 or uh, 55 and older community. We can build out that niche list for you to help you get it out to them. So that's gonna help you out immensely as well time-wise in case you don't have a big list. I can tell you, we work with everyone from new agents, top producers, just seasoned, been in the game for a while, uh, part-time agents trying to find a way to uh, leverage their time because we have a marketing team for each one of those categories so they can show you how to effectively use it so that you're seeing some ROI, okay? So into the bottom line pricing, really simple guys. We have a one-time activation, 99 bucks. This is the only thing you pay up front. This is a one-time payment. So it's gonna set up your portal that I showed you. It's gonna set you up with the marketing team. Uh, the marketing team will help you strategize who to use it and how to use it. And also they'll put it together for you. And anybody's address, as I said earlier, that you give to us, nobody can mail it to that address except for you. And it comes with the targeted follow-up. The magazines, we bill you on the back end. Why? Because the minimum is 50, but most of you tend to do more than that. So you figure out how many you want to do, which magazine you want to do. And um, so you'll have time to get us your list and everything. The $4.19 already includes shipping. So, I mean, you, you really can't beat that. Whether it's California, New Jersey, it costs you guys the same thing. Uh, my running joke, but it's actually really serious. The magazine is, is cheaper than a Hallmark card when you really think about it. So at the end of the day, you'll pay for this once they're done. We'll send you a finalized proof. You approve it, and then that's when they go out, and that's when you pay for the magazines. Uh, something we did today, not just for you guys, we did corporate-wise. We gave everybody who signed up 15 free magazines uh, just to kind of close out the week. So what does that mean? You don't have to sign up today, but if you did sign up today, you would get 15 free magazines. Uh, there's no contract, which should be music to your ears as well. Uh, you can do it every two months, which is our, how often we change the content, but you could do it quarterly. You can do it once or twice a year. There is no commitment uh, contractually. So that frees you up to do other marketing. It frees you up to kind of place this strategically when you want to use it. The only thing we ask you to do is at least a minimum of 50. And that could even be 20 of them going to you and 30 going to individual addresses, which I do recommend that you do have some sent to you for your listing appointments, open houses, putting them in places of businesses. And that's, that's really it, guys. It's really simple. Um, as I told you, we work with everyone. Uh, my information is up here. So there's two ways to sign up. Uh, keep in mind, we're on the East Coast. So it's two o'clock your time. I believe that's what, 12, one, two, 11, 11 your time? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm here. I'm here until three your time today. Uh, so you can either call me and sign up directly. Like if you have any questions, I'll answer those. And if you want to get started, we can do that. But in the event, I know you guys are busy. Um, as long as you use this online sign up link and do the 99 today, you'll get the 15 free. But we will have the regular promotion open for a whole week. So if you don't care about the 15 free, no problem. But you can go to this online sign up link and do the 99 right there. And that generates you your login and receipt. And that's is it uh joe question. so uh i'm gonna sign up today so just follow up with me okay uh, i did have a question i spoke to peter yes. uh not our peter your peter yeah my <laughs> uh, regarding um headshots he yes. said that you guys uh because a lot of the agents right now we're gonna uh, we're putting together a headshot um trying to put a headshot 
you know, kind of uh, session so we can get like a, you know, group discount from whoever is going to okay. be doing that. But he told me something that you guys do that. We do. So we have a graphics department where we can spruce it up. We don't do the headshots, but we can like say you want um, a blush or something like that. Um, I mean, if you guys are getting professional, they'll probably already be done. But any adjustments you need us to make to that picture, we have a graphics department that can help you with that. Okay. And that's included? Yes. Correct. All right. Um, right. Any questions for Joe? Uh, yes, gonna... I have a question. Yes. This, this is Irma Sid. I have a question now. You said it's a minimum of 50, correct? Yes. So if, do you guys give a price break the more you order? The next price break would be like 400. I mean, we get some agents who do that, but we drop 50 cents per magazine. The price breaks are 400 and then a thousand, it would go down to a dollar reduction. So anytime you do those quantities, that would be the price break. We do get some agents who do that, but I mean, honestly, you could spread that out throughout the year and still hit everybody and save yourself some money than trying to do 400 a pop. Okay, thank you. Yep. I love it. Would it be possible to get a sample of the magazine there's there's only of us there's only 11 of us in the this training right now i have i have peter sent me i think like five full samples of like the complete package so if you guys whoever is is really interested come see me it's it's they're be, it's beautiful material trust me i throw away a lot of stuff but these i don't <laughs> i read through it uh, I get all the the uh, the recipes. I use the recipes. Yeah. I actually do cook. Um, so, but yeah, I do have those samples. Uh, oh, great, uh, Joe. If there's a team, it's that price is for the team, right? Like if it's a right. five, okay. right? Yes, yeah. You can you can do co-brand. You can do team. However you guys want to do it, we can work with either way. It's the same pricing. Um, you can switch back and forth between the magazine too, guys. So that's also something important. We have some agents who love doing Start Healthy because they live a healthy lifestyle. So that's what their clients know them as. So if you started out saying sending good to be home, the next time you could send Start Healthy and then American wow. Life. So you can switch between the four and you can go in there and manually update your mailing list. We have some agents who have their list segmented into like an A and a B list. So, I mean, there's really nothing that we can't do. Just tell us what you need and we can make it happen. Last question. Are you uh, nationally or just locally? Nationally. Nationally. Okay. Yep. Reason why I'm asking if you know, want to send it to like, you know, people out, out of the state that, you know, potentially will come into the, into California or something. Yeah. We get a lot of, a lot of people were doing that. Um, I think a lot of people were moving, moving to Iowa from California, I think it was or something. So we had some people sending it to California because they knew Iowa was like the hot landing spot. Um, so yeah, you can do all of that. Uh, we have a referral program too, guys. So if you guys do sign up and you know other business professionals, even outside of real estate that would want to use it, let me know because then we also give you a $60 cash credit for anybody that you refer over. So that's the other thing we do too. Oh, that's great. All right. All right. Perfect. So I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to have Peter give you a call, Peter, to get you going. And then I'm also going to send you an email that you can blast out to anyone who might not have made it today. So they have that same opportunity. I'll put all the details in the email and I hope to be able to work with some of you. Hey, Joe, really Joe one more question. Yes. Okay. This is a, a unique question. Are you related to the famous boxer? I knew it was, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love boxing. I love yeah, that, boxing. That was my pops. That's smoking. Oh, Joe's no way. Yeah. 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 Nice. Well, yeah. My son uh, is into boxing. So he used to be a manager of a boxer. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He's but a anyways. great, great, great guy. I mean, I, I love hearing all the stories. It never gets old, but uh, I've never heard one bad story about my pop. So that's, that's what keeps me going. And I try to yeah. keep his name and legacy going. Uh, oh, I can't wait. To I can't wait to tell my son I'm. <laughs> I so, so we could all we could all say that we know Joe Frazier Jr. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I was. That's um, why you have it in the back in, in your name. You have Joe Jr. and you have the picture in your yep. in your mantle back yes. in the back of your. So that's yeah. That's my pops, and then that I have this here. Uh, that's my family. What we did yeah. is what cool story. This uh, company called Paint Your Life. Um, I saw it on Facebook and what they can do is they can do a, a painting and merge different photos. So my wife's father was a boxer. He wasn't as well known, but he boxed and she knew my father, but never met her. And I never met her father. So what we did is we had our family 
That's my three daughters. My fourth one wasn't born at the time, but we merged three different photos and made it look like it was one family photo. Wow. So that's, that's what they can do. So if you lost a loved one or something like that, it's really cool oh, if they've wow. never been able to meet them because they can merge it all together. Nice. That is awesome. Hey, thanks for that tip. Thank hey, you. Joe. Thank you for the information. Yes, hey, Joe, even though it shows Peter Cam, uh, just tell Peter, uh, your Peter, that this is Ruben. Not Peter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it said Ruben, I think, but it says Peter. I was like, well, maybe no, it's, Peter. It's Ruben. I'm just using okay. the credentials. All right. Perfect. I'll let All him right. know. Well, well, thank you, Ruben, for having me. And thank you, everybody okay. in attendance, too. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Bye -bye. Well.